Crazy Brave Step Number Two. Listen. The spark of a new idea is much like a visitor arriving at your home with something to tell you. As the host, you honor their sacred presence by inviting them in and making them comfortable by pouring some cherry tea and placing a soft pillow behind their backs. You are getting ready to hear the greater message. What they have to share with you requires your anticipation and focused attention. The Sacredness Prayer. When I listen to the quiet of a river, it has words to tell me. When I listen to the silence inside a piece of music, it speaks volumes to my soul. Today I will be aware of the form of things. I will observe the way a clock looks on the wall, the vibrant yellow of my necklace, or maybe the way a stranger takes his strides as he walks down the street. I will be an observer of things today. I will listen carefully. Sacredness and beauty do not require my judgment. Only my observation. The verse capturing a whisper. Chances are there has been a story whispering to you. You've seen it in an image, felt it in your gut, or heard someone say something that sparked your interest, and now you are listening. When you begin writing the verse of your song, think about what you would like to say. Who are the characters in your story? Is this a personal story, or is it about someone else? If your verses are well crafted, the listener will be drawn in, captivated, and encouraged to get more information about the subject matter. The movement of the first verse should have built into it the anticipation of opening a new gift. Although the box might give clues about its contents, the anticipation rises as you pull away the wrapping to see what is inside. Stories are best told using elements of a character's circumstances surrounded by compelling emotions. Although most of your backstory will not make it into the final song, development of the character creates a bedrock of songwriting information to pull from as you build lyric, music, and mood. The elements of the verse, known as the alpha A section. Verses typically have the same melody with different lyrics in each verse. Verse one introduces us to the story, character, perspective, and conflicts the character may have in the storyline. Verse 2, and subsequent verses used depending on structure, gives us more information about the character's emotional state or circumstance, and it keeps the listener engaged by presenting another look at the problem or circumstance at hand. The general listener is interested in lyric first and melody second. To aid in the listening process, verses should be melodically simple, singable, and lyrically rich so that the listener can concentrate on the story being told. Use detail and imagery to help anchor the listener into the storyline. Check out songs like Carrie Underwood's Before He Cheats. The lyric is, I dug my key into the side of his pretty little souped-up four-wheel drive. Or Stevie Wonders I Wish. The lyric is, Looking back on when I was a little nappy-headed boy. Be careful not to use cliché words or obvious rhymes. When the listener anticipates a rhyme, it takes the punch out of the phrasing, and the listener relaxes his attention to the story you are telling. For example, The rain in Spain falls mainly on the... We all know the ending of that line. Keep the listener guessing by offering new lyrical and melodic turns as you go. The element of surprise brings the listener back into the story and offers additional story intrigue. Search for the layers of stories underneath the obvious story. Let us hear what your characters are really thinking, what is really happening, and what they really feel about a situation or circumstance. Be transparent without giving it all away. The music should complement the lyric and vice versa. You are aiming for a flow of storytelling. The goal is to match catchy, simple melodies with strong lyrics that drive the story. Be careful not to word stuff cramming too many lyrics into a melodic phrase. There should be an ease and flow to each line you write. The verse and its spiritual meaning. The verse of your song is where the story is told. When you delve into a song story about Uncle Samuel's new green suit, mom's cooking, the dilemma of a romantic breakup, or the time you swam in the ocean, all ideas are specific to you and can be turned upside down and inside out according to how you see it. It is important to write through the personal lens of your imagination and emotional understanding. I encourage new songwriters to get into the habit of journaling as often as possible. 
There is no right or wrong way to journal, but developing a steady practice of writing about the things that are happening in your life will keep you connected to the personal emotion, thoughts, and circumstances of living. As mundane as it may seem at times, each expression of an event, circumstance, or life occurrence helps you find the flow of your authentic voice. Take some time to read over past journal entries, and you will probably discover some great story ideas you may have missed earlier. Consistency is the key, but be aware that journaling is not songwriting. Use a separate time dedicated to the act of songwriting. When you are working on developing a storyline about a song character that is different from you, write about what you would do if you were in that character's situation. Place yourself in their shoes and tell the truth. Be compassionate in your perspective. If you are fortunate enough to be a singer-songwriter writing about your personal experiences, also be willing to tell the truth, even if it means exposing the dark side of your own character or the lightheartedness of your positive outlook. Telling the truth from your heart resonates in a strong, honest way. That's one reason singer-songwriters are such a cherished and respected part of pop music. They sing and write what honestly moves them, and the purity of the message resonates from their heart to the listener's ears. Take rap music, for example. Rappers strive to tell it as they see it, living through the craziness of street life, told through the rhythmic pulse of political boundaries, rules, and outside restrictions. I heard from industry people at the birth of rap, back in the 70s, that it was probably a fad and was not going to be around for long. We all know how wrong they were. Rap has defined a culture precisely because of its authenticity and introspective, personal perspective. Don't divulge the whole story in the first verse. Just as in a great novel or movie, most good stories build up your curiosity, leaving you with some mystery to discuss at the end. Be vulnerable. The more you offer and the more real your story is, the more your audience will appreciate the music you write. The crafting of a song will require a large volume of information surrounding one story to be edited down into short phrases, concise lyrical choices, and interesting melodic phrasing. It will require that you listen carefully to your internal dialogue while making a series of tiny, ongoing decisions about what material to use, what to say, and how to tell the story in the most captivating way. The act of deep listening involves a sacred connection that is naturally therapeutic. Counselors use deep listening to help clients get to the root of a problem, teachers use it to serve students, and mothers use it to listen to what their children need. You can use it for deeper spiritual understanding within yourself as you seek to write honestly and then extend your song to others who might be healed by your music. When you are quiet enough and still enough to hear a whisper from Netlove speaking to you through the musicality of a song, the quiet part of you knows what to do. Move into a sacred, non-judgmental space where, for just a short time, you can become beholden to the palpable sense of reverence and observational beauty inside your own spirit. Give it time, space, and love. Your willingness to get to the heart of your subject matter, to tell a story of intrigue, and to connect to your individuality is what will make your song stand out in an overcrowded song market. My Story, Pi. When you first start to write a song, you are almost immediately confronted with an endless series of choices to make. Let's say you are inspired to write a song about your childhood friend. Without too much thought, you first conjure up a good feeling image of when, at the age of eight, you remember playing in the park on a carousel with your friend. Then you remember hearing years later that your friend had become addicted to drugs. Now that you are in your 40s and have a family of your own, you wonder about your friend where she is, and what has become of her. This story offers hundreds of thoughts that can end up in your song. But where do you start? For clarity, start by separating the core of this story into three distinct areas, perspective, imagery, and emotions, or pi. Perspective. Here are some examples. Number one, time passes so fast. Number two, The carousel is a good metaphor for the circle of life. Number three, childhood innocence is something I would love to capture again. Number four, when you lose someone, they always remain in your heart. Number five, when I see my children play, it reminds me of my friend. Number six, 
I can pray for my friend wherever she is in the world. Number seven, I had another family member who struggled with addiction. Number eight, I hope I see her again one day. Some examples of imagery. Number one, the carousel going round and round. Number two, the park near my house. Number three, my friend's black hair. Number four, my little girl laughs the same way my friend did. Number five, my friend and I used to pass notes to each other in class. Some examples of emotions. Number one, the joy of playing and having fun as a child. Number two, I miss my friend. Number three, I feel sadness for my friend. Number four, I long to see my friend again. Number five, I wonder what happened to my friend. As you are naturally editing, here are some possible ideas that might run through your mind. I think I would like to concentrate on the feeling of youth versus the pain of addiction. I don't want to be obvious in my lyric. Maybe I'll start to talk about my life first and then discuss my friend's life. I want this to be a slow, heartfelt ballad in the style of John Legend or maybe Adele. Maybe I'll write about these things in my life and maybe I won't include my friend's story in the song at all. The pie approach will give you a rich bed of material to begin the actual writing process. If you've done your job by getting into the heart of the story using these elements, then the writing process will flow much easier. Horses in a Field One day, when I was in the middle of a songwriting session with a co-writer, my mind's eye was working overtime. I kept seeing a group of horses running through a field. The subject matter of the song we were writing had nothing to do with horses or fields or anything close to that. I knew right away that this wasn't a memory I was seeing because I've never seen horses running at full speed before except maybe in a movie. I became quietly interested about this image that had shown up out of nowhere. There are different types of imagery corresponding to our mental, physical, or emotional senses. Visual imagery refers to the ability to see scenes and pictures. Auditory imagery refers to the ability to hear noises or music. Tactile imagery refers to the sense of touch. One of the most fascinating abilities is serial imagery, which refers to one image repeated in several forms. For example, serial imagery would have occurred if I had seen the horses standing in front of me, then seen them from an aerial view, and then suddenly seen all the horses running in various colors across a field. Chances are you've experienced one or more of these powerful forms of imagery as a function of the creative process. As I saw the horses running in a field, I knew that the images were telling me something. I told the other rider what I was seeing. After a lengthy discussion, we came up with absolutely nothing that might fit into our song, but I kept trying to somehow mesh the imagery into the verse lyric. Here's what we finally came up with. The lyric was, Our love was a miracle, a comfort by my side, together invincible, like horses running wild. It is wise in the writing process to pay attention to the whispering images that show up in your consciousness. Net love might have elegantly orchestrated an answer to help you move along your song. This answer can come in the form of a phrase someone offers, a phone call at just the right moment, or a random image that pops into your head. Everything is available to you in the writing process, so stay open and observe. Wake up, Mr. McCartney. The word inspiration means to breathe into and is embedded into the fabric of our psycho-spiritual characters as human beings. On a collective and personal level, we all know the awe we feel when a baby is born, as well as the powerful feeling we have when we hear a song that meets us where we are. One transforming, inspired thought has the capacity to shift whole civilizations, communities, and people one by one. Steve Jobs, Stevie Wonder, and Albert Einstein are a few of the famous people who took an inspired idea, acted on it, and subsequently changed a whole global community and perspective, helping us to heal. 
The song Yesterday, written by Paul McCartney, was originally written in much the same way. The melody came to McCartney in a dream one night while he was staying at his girlfriend's house. Fortunately for the world, he made the choice to get up in the middle of the night, sit at the piano, and pound out this new melody before forgetting it completely. He had a melody only, without any lyric, and so he hummed the words scrambled eggs over the melody line. McCartney's initial thought was that he was plagiarizing someone else's work because the song seemed all too familiar. As he said, Eventually, it became like handing something into the police. I thought that if no one claimed it after a few weeks, then I would have it. It might have seemed like a small thing to get up in the middle of the night and record a melody on the piano, but let's take a look at the mighty strength and power that one crazy brave act can make. The power of inspiration mixed with a willingness of the songwriter to recognize and capture the moment resulted in a legendary song that made quite an impact. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this song was the most covered pop song of all until it was surpassed by You've Lost That Loving Feeling by the Righteous Brothers in 1999. There are as many as 3,000 versions of the song recorded by some of the greats in music history. Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, The Supremes, Andy Williams, Boys to Men, and Carrie Underwood, to name a few. It was the first Beatles song to capture a mass adult market. Michael Jackson, the King of Pop, reportedly paid $47.5 million for the Beatles catalog, which included 260 Beatles classics, including Yesterday, and Let It Be. Time Travel When you are listening and receiving new sparks of information from source, there will be an opportunity to time travel. Your crazy brave heart, in cooperation with net love, is not bound by earthly space and time, and therefore it has characteristics that reach far beyond your current spot, stretching back before you were born and far out into the future. In the ancient world, the Greeks would look out into the heavens and notice movement among the stars. Through astrology, they sought to understand the celestial changes as they related to external and observable phenomena. They used this information to make sense of night and day, the changing seasons, and the tides of ocean currents. For the Greeks, music was also considered to have profound mystical properties, as celestial movements experienced in the sacred parts of ourselves. As you time travel in your writing, assessing past experiences, current situations, and future possibilities, what you are listening for are frequencies, small emotional underpinnings, that are seeking expression through you. Frequencies are vibrational pulls of information suggesting something more. A thought about a past situation links with a powerful image, which links to a reoccurring thought, which in turn becomes a line of music that you might never have considered before. The act of songwriting begets the act of songwriting, and creativity begets more creativity as the planets move within. You will find that writing is its own source of surprising revelation and a detailed exercise in paying attention. If the process of songwriting seems hard, it is because all parts of you are being commissioned to create. Your subconscious, your past experiences, your emotional center, your mental state, and your divine spirit. Your spiritual intuitive center in particular is on high alert as you access different parts of yourself as a writer. As you connect your personal brand of creativity with the divinity that is already inside of you, you may find that your ideas will unexpectedly time travel, like my little tune, It Won't Be Long, in step one. Or you might conjure up a beautiful melody in your dream or through some other synchronistic event. It's a good idea to keep all of your music snippets and all of your unfinished thoughts on paper or in an audio file. There have been countless times when I've looked back on my written notes only to be reminded of some cool, odd phrase that I had written down earlier and that now seems to fit perfectly into the song I'm working on. The key is to have a strategy for capturing these tidbits of information. If you think you'll remember the awesome Grammy award-winning tune when you get home, think again. You won't. Song inspirations are like dreams, ephemeral segments of possibilities. When musical inspiration arrives, stop everything and hum it into your phone, pull out a scribble journal, or go to your guitar or piano. Your commitment to real creative listening as it arises from your spirit is the name of the game as you excavate and ground new ideas. 
Take the time to tune in to what is important and then surrender to the process and listen. The clock on the wall. I have always loved clocks. I love to look at the wide variety of styles, the way the numbers on the face are either true or Roman numeral style, and the way you can wear a clock on your arm as a fashion piece or hang it on the wall in your bedroom. I especially marvel at the series of clocks you occasionally see at airports or in diners, where you can simultaneously witness time zones across the globe in places like New York, New Zealand, New Hampshire, or New Delhi. In those moments, when I see different time zones, the clocks remind me that my morning is someone else's evening, someone's lunchtime, and someone's sleep time. Clock time offers a constant, meditative recalibration of where our bodies are in the world right now, marking the subtle passage of moment to moment and offering a gentle reminder to keep the ball rolling forward within the flow of the day. It reminds us of the subtle connection between the linear movement of time as it connects to people in our immediate vicinity and for hundreds of miles within the radius of our home. If you were to ask people what they really thought about clocks, you would get as many variations on a theme as there are people. Maybe a clock fell off the wall and hit you in the head when you were six years old. Maybe you have an affinity for yellow antique clocks because your grandmother had one on her nightstand. Or you have a love for purple wristwatches because a dear friend gave you one on your birthday. Maybe digital clocks are your fancy because you had trouble learning how to read time on a wall clock when you were younger. Many years ago, I read a wonderful book by author Dr. Paul Persall, who told the story of how he waited for a phone call that would tell him whether he lived or died. As he waited with his family, the clock in the hallway that had hung on the wall for over 20 years suddenly fell, shattering on the floor. Within seconds after the crash of the clock, the phone rang. I'm afraid your time has run out, the doctor said. The biopsy shows the cancer has spread through your bones. I'm sure that for some time after that life-changing moment, the writer thought long and hard about the meaning of the synchronistic event. Although the clock had been part of the family for years, it now had another meaning and memory attached to it. To illustrate this point about personal perspective, there is a simple exercise I like to give to songwriting groups. I ask each of the participants to write a brief description of a leaf, and I give them two minutes to complete the exercise. As the wheel of creativity begins turning, there is a noticeable hum and stillness as everyone gets to work. When time is up, each participant gets a chance to share as the room turns in to listen. It becomes apparent very quickly that each person has a different thought about a leaf. Some pull from old memories, whereas others talk about the changing of the seasons, the thickness of leaf veins, colors, shapes, and textures. No matter how many songwriters are in the room, it still astonishes me that no one duplicates the same imagery, flow, rhythm, words, and description of what a leaf means. The descriptions are generated by personal perspective and unique interpretation. When you are in the process of writing a song, the unique impressions and perceptions brought to the game of songwriting are entirely your own. Perspective becomes the earthly clay by which we mold thoughts, about everything under the sun so that the story of a song can be told from a particular point of view. Too often, writers discard their unique perceptions as unimportant, measuring them up against some general utopia out there, some umbrella belief of acceptability about what a song should be. Then doubt sets in. The only way to tamper down songwriting neurosis is to use your fundamental propensity for compassion and empathy as an antidote, as you remember that your song has the great potential to do good all by itself. The redirection of your intention in this way will take the pressure off and expose the psycho critic for what it is, a meddling annoyance that will bully your songwriting spirit whenever it can. Give yourself a break and lean into the uniqueness that defines you without judgment, criticism, or self-loathing. Remember that your art has the potential to uplift others and you may never know the full impact of your song on people who reside in places like New York, New Zealand, New Hampshire, or New Delhi. Focus on the impulse, the fun, and the craft of what you do. Remember that your perspective is unique like a fingerprint and is important to the functioning of the world. 
Trust. I commonly ask my vocal students if they have ever written a song. One student told me that she wrote a little in her spare time, so I asked if she would bring me a few of her songs the next time we met. The following week, she emerged with a huge, gigantic, oversized book of lyrics. I assumed that because she didn't play an instrument, the lyrics were probably just lyrics without any musical identities. How wrong I was. Each lyric had a distinct, identifiable musical rhythm, melody, and flow, which she proudly sang to me as she turned page after page. When I confronted the obvious and told her that she was indeed a songwriter and a good one at that, she seemed in disbelief and then listed all the reasons why she didn't really think so. Songwriting is about trust. You will repeatedly wonder whether your music is worth pursuing, whether the lyric works in the song you are building, or whether you are using the right chord in the middle of the bridge. Without a sense of trust about the thousand of small choices you will make as you go along, you will never get through finishing a song or believing in the fortitude of it. In the midst of writing, you have available to you an intuitive Geiger counter that pings loudly if you have a good idea or pings softly if you need to find a new choice. This is true when you are writing collaboratively because writing partners can become musically in sync with each other's thoughts and processes. During every second you are writing, your intuitive Geiger counter is standing at attention, ready to communicate to you immediately what works and what doesn't. When you are listening, stand up for the ideas that come through and trust your intuition. Song Stuck a songwriting friend of mine told me she was having one of those maddening experiences where a song wouldn't stop playing over and over in her head. What do you think the song is about, I asked. She immediately pulled up the song Radioactive on her phone, and together we listened all the way through. I think it's about the end of the world as we know it and the rise of a new one, she said. Does that have meaning for you, I probed. This concept of an old world ending and a new one beginning opened up a long conversation between us. She talked about work-life struggles and the need to develop a personal relationship with God. She had been attending church more regularly, going to yoga classes, and reading worldly books on the subject of God, all to help her grasp and make sense of this tough time in her life. Together we came to the conclusion that maybe the song was trying to get her attention so that she would gain a greater understanding that although life can be tough in the moment, there is a new and different world waiting. This phenomenon of getting songs stuck is not to be confused with the energy of songs you are writing. Songs that you are in the process of writing have their own nagging stamina, much like an algebra problem that you keep trying to solve on a chalkboard. But songs that are vying for your attention through repetitive circular action might have a specific message for you, a gift sent to you from net love. As scientific study meets greater spiritual understanding, I'm convinced that we will gain a more unified understanding about the mechanics surrounding spiritual energy and creativity. When you get song stuck, or you hear the same old song twice in the same day, or you start singing a song from 20 years ago, listen to the lyric, melody, and mood of that song carefully. There just might be a message buried beneath the surface, sent directly and lovingly to you for your benefit. The world is my writing room. The world is your writing room. I am giving you permission to write whenever and wherever you can. Don't wait for the perfect situation, the perfect journal, the perfect writing partner, or the perfect inspirational moment to hit you in the face. Simply write and do it often. When Michael Jackson climbed his favorite tree at his Neverland Ranch in Santa Barbara, California, and explained to the cameras that climbing a tree helped him write great songs, the interviewer thought he was crazy. Climbing the tree made perfect sense to me. I understood the beauty of creating an environment that would assist the creative process. In that crazy tree, Mr. Jackson wrote millions of dollars worth of songs, like Heal the World, Childhood, and Black and White. I'm sure the tree helped him to center, focus, and dream. You have to have a steadfast, gorilla mentality about keeping up a disciplined habit. You might decide that every day after work, you are going to give songwriting two hours of your time. Then on Thursdays, you decide it might be wise to give yourself a break and spend time with friends. Your commitment should stay steadfast. 
If you are hit with a spark of inspiration late at night, get up and write it down. If you are shoveling snow from your front driveway and the sun glistening on the snow triggers an old memory, stop shoveling now and write down your thoughts. The spark of inspiration is ephemeral in nature and doesn't stick around for too long. If you wait until after you finish shoveling snow, your inspiration might be gone. Your job is to capture as much as you can when you can. After all, you prayed about writing and wished deep down that you could do great things with your music. Now it's coming in bits and pieces. Don't shortchange the process by ignoring the whispers you receive. And don't be afraid to climb a tree if it helps you listen more intently. Crazy Brave Step Number Two Listen Song Food Spiritual Theme of This Chapter Music is a spiritual language. As you partner with NetLove, learn to fine tune and cultivate your listening skills so that you can capture new song ideas as they arrive in your consciousness. The Takeaway The act of deep listening is a loving and sacred connection that is naturally therapeutic. Song stories are shaped by your unique perspective and interpretation. Through the use of personal perspective, imagery, and emotional content, crafting a song becomes an expression of who you are on a deep spiritual level. Become a conscious observer and interpreter of your environment. No ideas are small. Listen and trust that each idea has great potential. Keep a record of all new ideas. Crazy Brave Action Number One Purchase Two Journals One Personal Journal for Your Regular Writing Practice and One Songwriting Journal Schedule Your Writing Practice Daily, Weekly, and Monthly Remain Constant and Steady in Your Commitment Even When You Don't Feel Like It Number Two Capture Your Muse Determine a Way to Record and Capture New Ideas Keep Your Journal, Phone, or Audio Device with You at All Times this tells the universe that you are serious and ready.